Hey guys, being that it's fall and I'm out in Colorado shooting fall colors right now, I thought it could be helpful to do a start to finish tutorial on how I would blend a couple images bracketed and basically editing them from start to finish. So I have two images open right now in Lightroom. These are the famous dancing aspen trees in Colorado. I have a base exposure and then I have my underexposed shot for the highlights. So you can see that the sun star is a little bit more properly exposed and you also have more detail on the sky in the underexposed shot. So you can follow along with these instructions in Lightroom or if you're comfortable using Camera Raw from Bridge, they work just the same. Basically the end goal is to open up the prep files into Photoshop and then do the rest of the work in Photoshop using the Pro Panel. All right, so I have the two files open in Lightroom. The first thing I'll do with the base exposure let me make sure my screen brightness is properly up. First thing I'll do with the base exposure is maybe just brighten it a tiny bit, bring down the highlights a touch, and maybe open up the shadows just a bit. Now for the underexposed shot, the goal whenever I'm doing any type of blending is to get the two files or three files or whatever, however many you're using, similar in exposure, basically because we're only using certain parts. So we're gonna brighten this guy up a lot and we're gonna bring the highlights down. So the thing is, is we will have some shadow noise, but not to worry because we are only bringing the highlights back in from this photo, which are gonna be super clean. Now, if you do do the profile corrections, make sure that you do them the same for whatever files that you're blending together, because if you don't make them the same, then they won't line up. So I'm actually gonna turn off the distortion and just leave the vignette control on, on these guys here. And now you can see that they still line up perfectly shot on a tripod back to back there will be no alignment issues all right so we're going to select both of these photos here we're going to right click and we're going to go to edit in and then open as layers in photoshop all right so we have both of the files open in photoshop now you can see it opens them as layers one on top of the other all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brights mask from the overexposed layer. You can tell which one that is because of the blown out sun star there. So I'm going to do brights two, for example. And then whenever you're working with these masks, these are mask previews initially until they're applied as a mask or a group of masks or an adjustment. So the white will essentially show you in a preview what will be revealed. Again, black conceals, white reveals. So in this instance, Brights 2 is going to create this nice mask, basically just blending in the highlights shown in white. I could even increase this just a little bit if I want to, just to make those areas that were showing in white just a little bit brighter, which means there's going to be just a little more revealed. You can also use the Refine tool as well to you know, create some more contrast. So again, black conceals, so we're, we're basically concealing more of those shadows. And if I bring up the brights, or I bring the brights to the left, then you can see we're revealing more of those highlights. So that looks good there. I'm gonna click OK. And I'm gonna group and mask this. So again, the reason I like to group and mask this is I can just bring my underexposed layer into that group, and I can make some specific targeted adjustments just to this layer here that's in the group. Or if you turn off everything else, you can see these are the highlights that are revealed through this group here. Basically, again, black conceals, white reveals. So you can see here that we're just showing these highlights through this group and this image here for our underexposed shot. So if I zoom in, everything looks good. There was no alignment issues. If there was, you know, wind or something like that, then potentially we could have issues with the alignment with the leaves. But fortunately, it was not windy and everything looks good. All right. So from here, you could just select the top layer and you could just flatten the image if you're happy with the blend or you can stamp visible. So usually I just stamp visible so that I can return back to the original files in the document if I need to later on. So stamp visible and you could rename this if you wanted to something like blended. All right, so next up, I'm gonna go over here to filters and then I'm gonna do the darken highlights. Darken highlights is just gonna basically darken the brightest highlights and then bring back a little bit more detail and richness to those brighter areas. All right, then I'm gonna do the Lux layer. So I like the Lux, it just adds a nice little pop of contrast. You can see the contrast added there and the brightness and the colors. All right, so then next up, I'm gonna do the Orton Sharp. 
So Orton Sharp is a combination of the Orton and the High Pass Sharpness. So this is the Orton Solo, this is the High Pass Solo uh, for the sharpening. So this is just a combo of the two. So when you click Orton Sharp, it's gonna bring up these dialog boxes here. These are just different values that I've found work the best overall for most photos. You can play around with these if you'd like to and change them, but I usually just keep them on the default because again, I think that they're the best. So I'm gonna click OK. And here the levels comes up and you can adjust, you know, the brightness or darkness of this Orton effect if you'd like to. And then last but not least, the high pass comes up. Again, I just use 2.8 on all my photos. I think it looks great. So I turn this off and on, you can see the difference there. Usually the Orton can be strong in some photos, so maybe I'll just bring this down to 10% or 11 is good. And then the, for the sharpening, I'll actually zoom in. I'll turn the sharpening off and on. And I'll just bring down the opacity to where I still see the effect, but I don't think that it's too strong. Again, I think that this works best when you're zoomed in. All right, so. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this top layer and close the group because you need the group closed to create new layers basically without putting them in the group. So I'm gonna do the custom vignette. So I'm gonna create a custom vignette. I'm gonna grab my elliptical marquee tool here and I'm just gonna make a little circle here on the center of the image and then click custom vignette. And if I turn that off and on, you can see that's quite strong. So I'm just gonna turn down the opacity just a bit right to something like that. You could also try the enhanced foliage on this. This is going to basically enhance the colors in the foliage. If you think it's too strong, you could turn it down as well. Um, fall foliage is gonna give it a completely different look. It makes the foliage look a little bit more orange. If you like that effect, you could use it or you could just turn it down Again, the opacity affects how much of the layer is revealed and basically the strength of that filter. So I think that looks pretty good. So again, I'm gonna stamp visible. I do this throughout my editing process just to create a merged copy of all the visible different adjustments and layers in the document. So now one thing that's bothering me is actually this corner here. So I'm gonna actually just gonna use the marquee tool select just this corner. I'm gonna hit the transform tool. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select warp. And I'm just gonna warp this area down here. Just to minimize whatever that was in the corner, I didn't really think it added to the image. I think it kind of was catching my eye, so I'm just gonna minimize it by hiding it. And I'm gonna click enter and then deselect. And you can see that I just basically just hid that little corner there. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is my finishing touches. I'm gonna just open this in camera raw really quickly. I'm just gonna bring the shadows up just a touch. Highlights down just a little bump the whites up so the whites makes the image pop but it also can blow the highlights out so one trick to this actually is you can create a radial filter put it over your brightest light source that is being affected that's getting blown out and then invert it and then basically you can just brighten the whites or bring the whites up and it's only going to bring the whites or whatever your adjustment you're adding to the outside of that filter so you can see it's not affecting the sun star here are not blowing it out further. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Click OK. And you can see we started from basically this blown out, kind of washed out looking image with the raw file. And then we have added some nice adjustments and some color and contrast. And I think that looks really good. You could also do some dodging and burning if you wanted to. So let's say we want to add a shadows mask something like that and we can also refine this as well again by bringing up the refine button let's do something like that and the cool thing about these mask previews guys is you can actually just grab your brush and paint right on this mask preview and it will adjust the mask 
So if I'm doing those type of adjustments with the brush on a mask preview, I'll usually change the blend of the brush to overlay and I'll use black and white basically to you know add to the selection or subtract. So let's say I really want to affect these trees here. I can paint over these trees and really, you know, dial in specifically the trees. Now I could apply this adjustment as a dodge and burn layer. So let's do dodge and burn overlay. Now you can see that we have a dodge and burn layer added with this layer mask attached. Again, white reveals black and seals. So whatever dodging and burning we do on this layer is only gonna be revealed where the areas are white. So let's just grab the dodge tool here. And I'll bring this down to something like 20%. I'm just gonna paint just over the trees. And you can see it's not affecting those bright highlights or the leaves in the background at all. So I've turned that off and on. You can see we've just brightened the trees. Or let's say that we wanna burn some of these shadows a little bit, we can grab the burn tool. with just a few sweeps we can basically just darken the shadows and you can see it's not affecting these highlights or these bright areas at all because it's only being revealed through this layer mask all right so again the before and the after so i'm happy with this image i'm going to go ahead and save this so i'll go to the finish tab and i have this set here for dancing aspens so i can just hit psb because that's usually what i save my documents as or a psd if it's under two gigabytes now, if I wanted to add my watermark and save this for web, I could select my anchor point. Let's go with bottom right corner and select the opacity and the scale and then just click apply. You can see it just puts the watermark right there in the bottom corner. Now I can set my pixels for save for web to whatever I desire. 3000 I think usually works good. 2048 is what's recommended for most social media sites and websites, but I find 3000 pixels works really well. So I can just click JPEG now and that will save it for web. I'm not gonna add any sharpening to this because I did add sharpening with the high pass. All right guys, I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, you can leave them in a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, check out the five day deal. It's gonna be a epic bundle this year. Again, supporting charitable causes and it's only available for five days starting tomorrow, October 13th. Again, if you use my specific link below, then I will send you out an extra tutorial for the pro panel after the sale is over, but it needs to be purchased through the link so that I can actually see that your email is linked with the link and then I can send you it out after the fact. All right, guys, thanks again and happy creating.